Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. A bit of a change of venue today. I am here at my workspace. You can tell it's my workspace because there are splashes of paint everywhere and I have my trusty custard creams. I ruddy love custard creams. You know, the best thing about custard creams is... So what some of my subscribers may not realise is in another life I was a writer. I've previously written several thrillers for adults and I have written several fantasy novels for young adults. And creating fiction, um, narrative writing, creative writing is still something that's very important to me. Um, I've moved away from writing novels for the time being, but this is something I may go back to at some point in the future. Uh, but I think my love of creative writing is still evident in the way that I write my blog, Always Bored, Never Boring, the narrative structure to my reviews for games. And also, that love of narrative is why I'm so interested in thematic games and games that enable you to tell a story. Why I love war games, tabletop games, miniatures games, anything that allows me to create my own little narrative. And, and obviously Dungeons and Dragons as well, role-playing games. So, um, today we're going to take a look at some new miniatures I've got for a tabletop game which really does... Um, enable me to create fun stories on the tabletop. I think you always have that option with, with miniatures games to, to go wild and use your imagination and create things. But um, one that has particularly um, fired my imagination is Burrows and Badgers. And for Christmas, I acquired a few new miniatures for it. Let's take a look at them. They come in this super cute plastic box. There's only two in here, but they are very important characters. So, um, previously uh, for Burrows and Badgers, I've been using um, sort of Skaven from Games Workshop. I bought a selection of miniatures from a company called Northumbrian Tin Soldier, which I reviewed in a previous video, and those are lovely. But um, the official line of miniatures for Burrows and Badgers are from Oathsworn Miniatures, and I'll put a link to their website in the description below. I'm not affiliated with them, um, but if you go and check them out, I think if you like anthropomorphic animals and that sort of whimsy, that um, red wall type animal based fantasy, I think you will get a real kick out of their products and you will fall in love with them the same way that I have. So inside here, we have two wonderfully packaged miniatures. And like I say, these miniatures are very important for the narrative that I'm creating for my games. Um, because what I'm doing is I'm creating two different factions. The first faction are Imperial Knights, but they were um, formed into a group to hunt witches, basically. And they have somewhat gone rogue. And over time, they have used ever more nefarious uh, methods of rooting out witches, um, whether they be good or bad, uh, to cleanse the land. And this is a bat. Um, I don't know how well it's going to come out, obviously, because it's just white metal under light. But it is a wonderfully detailed miniature of a bat, which has one wing extended and it is holding a dagger. This bat is actually going to be for my witch hunter party. Um, it's going to be a sort of mage slash assassin. I'm going to try and uh, uh, work it into a, a sort of narrative of having uh, movement-based magic, dark magic, life-draining magic, and uh, being a, a magic-based assassin. Um, I absolutely love this miniature uh, because it's got a very a vampiric style to it as you might expect from a bat um the bat is actually wearing a hood but it's the the one wing across and the other wing up like a like a cloak which really sells this as something vaguely demonic something slightly evil it's a great miniature and it's going to form a centerpiece of of my witch hunter force as something that they can unleash to root out and destroy their enemies. And of course, all good witch hunters, or in this case, bad witch hunters, 
need a witch to hunt. And so this is the second miniature. It is absolutely beautiful. It's one of my favourites from the entire Oath Swarm Miniatures range. Um, it is a squirrel witch. Like she's got a staff, she's got a wand. Um, she is in a very dramatic casting magic pose. And I absolutely love this miniature. I think it is beautiful. And this is actually going to be the leader of my second faction, which obviously is a good witch who is now living in the forest and has accumulated a force of protectors who are sort of kind of like a Robin Hood Merry Men type vibe. Um, they are natural land dwelling um, animals who understand that this is a good witch who is using nature magic to help people and they want to protect her from the witch hunters. So that's the narrative that we're going for. And uh, it's just a cool miniature. It really is a nice miniature. I'm going to have a lot of fun sort of building, building forces around these concepts of a witch hunter and a witch. And building their their HQs. Burrows and Badgers has um, some lovely rules for creating um, bases of operations and, and tailoring your... Um, your force based on the resources they have access to. The third item that I'm going to show you in this video is not uh, a miniature that's going into any particular force, but Oath Swarm miniatures make Northumbrian pennies. Um, these can be used as tokens in the game for tracking anything you want really, used as objectives, um, hit point trackers, um, tokens for different abilities. It doesn't really matter. Um, I thought they were very cool when I saw them online. Uh, uh, slightly disappointed in the size of them. I would have liked them to have been a little bit bigger, but I cannot fault the detailing on them. They are really rather lovely. We have the king on this side um, and On the reverse, we have this emblem, this sigil, and those are very cool. Um, I'm going to paint these up. On the website, they suggest just um, washing them with black ink and then giving them a varnish. Um, I'm going to do something a little more with them, and we're going to do that now. So obviously these coins are small and fiddly, so what I do when I'm doing things like this is I glue them to bits of sprues with super glue. And that will just hold them in place while I paint them up and I can snap them off and just touch up the bit where the glue was applied. So um, I've given a base coat of black. And now we're going to use some of this, some bronze. And we're just going to give them a complete coating of the bronze. And I'm just using a large base brush for this and really one coat will probably do it. So with the bronze paint dry, we're just going to do a quick Agrax Earthshade wash. So with the wash dry we're basically done but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some greedy gold here but any gold will do and I'm just going to do a very light dry brush on the edges and on the most raised surfaces. What I don't want to do is I don't want to make the coins actually look gold but I just want to make some of the most raised details pop a little bit more than they do at the moment. But with this done, the only other thing to do is just to varnish the coins and they are finished. So when that dry brush was dry, I actually wasn't that happy with the final highlight. So I've done another highlight with Liberator Gold from Games Workshop. And that has brought out enough of a shine 
that I am happy with that. And these are only tokens after all. Um, so that's where I am leaving it. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please consider pressing that like button. And if you have really enjoyed it, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye everyone. Bye-bye.